Here you go, baby. This is Korea singing direct to fucking Sony. Tell them put another movie out. We'll fuck you in the ass. We'll get Clooney. He'll lick our nutsack. And that motherfucking Brad Pitt. He's a fucking fat kid. Oh yeah. Da 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 da. We'll fuck everybody up. The Koreans are coming in. They're slinging dick. Fuck your mother. Ba 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 ba. Koreans are rocking motherfuckers. Ba 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 ba. Fuck you motherfucker. Huh? You fuck with the Koreans. You fuck with the Koreans. You fuck with the Koreans. Yeah. What's up, you That's bad impressive. motherfuckers? The flying Jew and my main man, the baddest motherfucking Korean. Fuck Kim Jum Jum. We got my main man in this motherfucker, Bobby Lee, direct from the comedy store last night. Yo, man. What's up, baby? Thanks for having me on, man. Please, thank you for asking me last night. I, get I had embarrassed. to beg you to get no. on your show. I it's mean. embarrassing. I don't want to bother people. What you do know? you mean? You're always such a free spirit. I couldn't I even picture you sitting here for a fucking hour. I'm a dream weaver, dude. But you're so uh, different. This woman Wait. has settled you down a little bit. Oh, this, I'm dating I didn't a, want to throw you I'm, off. Yeah, I'm dating a jungle Asian. So, you know that? Now, is she born in the Filipino? I got in trouble once. I said that once. Yeah, you got to be careful. No, I said jungle, jungle Asian, and I had, then I had to apologize to like the Vietnamese like media and stuff. But I don't even know why that's wrong, because she's Filipino, and she lives in, she's from the jungle. The jungle. It's like saying, uh, uh, there's two kinds of blacks. There's black j- jungle blacks, and there's jungle city blacks. Jungle blacks get eaten by tigers, and city blacks get strangled by cops. Or shot. Oh, shot, yeah, or yeah. Shot and don't put, or choked, you're right. There's different kinds. There's different different kinds of people. Now, was she born in the Philippines? Yeah, she was. I'm Cebu. Dead. They're some bad motherfuckers. I know. I really like them. No, me too. I love the Philippines. The 12-year-olds have mustaches, full-blown mustaches. They're fucking tremendous. <laughs> tremendous. I never knew you knew Filipino. <laughs> that was amazing. You, you get, uh, that was amazing. Nick Totoro's wife is Filipino, and I, that's who really introduced me to the culture. Then my wife's best friend, who ended up being the baby's godparents, they're Filipino, and I go over to the house all the time. I, I mean, he did time and everything. He's in a fucking gang. Yeah. The dude you met, the, that really? dude's a the, bad motherfucker. Yeah, that's a gangland motherfucker. He just got out, and, you know, he's smoothing it out. And he got a job at one of the supermarkets, but he's still tatted up, and he got a motorcycle. And Yeah, you got to be careful. All right. If you see eight Filipinos, one of them has a machete. Yeah. Definitely. You, you go to their parties, they're the best parties. These people that, oh my God, Studio 54, fuck you. You go to a Filipino party. You get your dick sucked, you eat a, a raw bird, and you, they take you for $100 playing some fucking Chinese poker they know how to fucking play. It's amazing. They gamble. It's fucking tremendous. And you get 19 of them. Look at Pacquiao. Remember, he had yeah. three apartments filled with Filipinos. Yeah. Filled. They don't. They like being together. When you go see one, nineteen are close by. I heard like the church he goes to in West LA is always packed. Packed. I went there. Yeah. Sacred Heart on Sunset Boulevard. I go there on Wednesdays. Yeah. I did this movie. Oh, it was you? Yeah. It was yeah you. I did this movie with the old guy from Scarface, and he was really Catholic. And one day he comes to me. He's like, "Hey, man, I need to ride to church on Wednesdays because I can't drive." He was. He had like a those things in his eyes where you can't see. He's so blind. I, blind. Now nah, a little bit. Cataracts. Like cataracts, one of those. Okay. So I would drive him to church. <laughs> you don't do any research, you just... What's that? Yeah. yeah. Well, so <laughs> fucking so research. Like... This, is, this is on the cuff. You know what I'm saying? It's so... And he refused to go to the one. This guy was an old guy, but he refused to go to the church in Santa Monica because there's too many fucking fags over there. He would tell me, so don't take me over there. There's too many fucking fags. And I go, well, the other one's filled with Asians. I'd rather fucking hang out with the Asians. They're good fucking people. So we'd go and we'd see all these Asians in there. I always thought they were Chinese. Mm. And I kept saying to myself, why the fuck are all these Chinese people doing in a Catholic church at lunchtime, Bobby Lee? Yeah. They have a, tw- a quick mass. No priest, no nothing. They just put a record player on. And the record does the whole. It's tremendous. Are you or a cassette player. I don't that, know. That what must be it your is. favorite. Oh my god! It's a half hour. They don't even give you the cookie. Nothing. Quick. They, they you to put five dollars in the basket. You're done. It's the fastest mass, but it's packed with Asians. And on the way out, one day I saw Pacquiao, and then I put it together. Why? Uh, yeah. You know, we never talk about Asians. All of a sudden, we got an Asian on the phone on the show, <laughs> yeah, and all of a sudden, we're enthusiasts of Bruce Lee. How are you, Bobby Lee? You like Asian women? Love them. The vaginas are dark purple. Inside? Yeah, yeah. No, on the outside too. Yeah, I need a little lighter. But hey, every time we see an Asian girl, he's like, 
He sn- he, like scratch it and smells like soy sauce. Or oh something. my god! I love you them. see that? I love them. Yeah, it smells like soy sauce. They have that uh, kimchi little wang. It's maybe, a, it's more, maybe it's like a psychological. Thing, I yeah. dated a Korean girl. You're that eating, was you're very eating your guy. It, I think it looks like tastes like soy sauce, but it's only because they're Asian. Really? It's in your head. Yeah. It's saltier. It's, no, it's like it's, me it's, eating a girl's uh, like Mexican girl's vagina and going, "It tastes like carnasana," but <laughs> it's just probably just in my head. You know what I mean? No? All right, let's move on. We're not doctors or anything like that. No, Maybe no, you're no. right. Maybe you're right. I dated the first Asian girl I ever dated. To be honest with you, here's a, here's a drop in the bucket. First girl I ever dated was the first girl I had in the first grade. My little girlfriend in the first grade. Her father drew for Charles Schultz, Snoopy. Really? He's a Chinese like genius. The guy wouldn't even speak English. I went to the houses. They gave me candies with the paper on them. Yeah. They were really Chinese people. And that was my first... And then we would eat, or stay with all the food from around the corner. I would order food from that Chinese place. It was fucking tremendous in Manhattan on 87th Street and uh, Broadway. And then I dated a Korean girl in Colorado. Oh, you did? Tremendous. She's great, huh? She's great. She was a great girl. Tremendous. She went back to Korea to teach American to the fucking long jeans. Yeah. Is she still over there? No, she's in my hometown. She ended up marrying a Cuban dude. I'll never date a Korean again. Well, really? I dated a Power Ranger. Do you know that? I like dated the yellow one. She's Korean. First of all, you, yeah, don't put the Asian one in the yellow power ranger suit. That's racist. Because she's already yellow, you know? Well, didn't they put the black dude in the black one? Yeah, yeah. That's how they do it. But, dude, one night, dude, her name was Patty Lee. She wasn't... There was a, two Power Rangers. The one, there's one that went, went into space. Okay. She was yeah. in the space one, right? And one night, literally, she had long hair. At three in the morning... I was living in Silver Lake. Three in the morning, I woke up, and she was standing over me with her hair over her face staring at me like the grudge like the movie the grudge like a Japanese ghost and I said get the fuck out I cannot do this I, I didn't sleep for two weeks after that she had little chibi are, are, titties are you uh, Korean? yeah so yeah yeah. We, we've talked about a lot I'm Jewish I don't date Jewish girls I don't He's, like Cuban I like Cuban girls as a friend but I don't like dating because you know yeah now you were born in Korea Bobby Lee? no man San Diego bro. San Diego you yeah. stand, and you have the only brothers the one I met yeah he's killing it right now dude What's he doing? Bro, I brought him on a podcast. You know who David Cho is? Yes. Right, the artist? Yes. You know David, right? Yes, yes. So David, I had my brother on the podcast, David's podcast, and my, uh, David fell in love with him. So he signed him to a record deal. I'm not fucking lying, bro. First of all, flew, my brother had been late in 10 years because, you know, you know, my brother, he has a skateboard, no job, right? So he flew my brother to Macau to fuck 30 hookers. Right, I got all the photos and videos. I, it's disturbing. David Cho is just crazy. Yeah, he's crazy. He's just fucking. Then he the drew, flew my brother to Mexico to fuck hookers, right? And then Vegas, right? And then now they're in a record deal. My brother's in Hawaii right now with them, recording another album. It's crazy. I dude. didn't know your brother sang. Right? Either did I, dude. <laughs> <laughs> but he's doing it. He, I saw a show in downtown LA. He was amazing, dude. He killed it. I'm like, I can get maybe laid from this. You know? I mean, it was, I was so proud of him. This is a dude. Dude, I had fixed his eyes. He had, he had bumps on his body, like warts. I had to get them removed. I spent probably a million dollars of my lifetime taking care of my brother. And now he's now on his feet. It's great. How old is he? 40. Yeah, we're old, bro. I've known you for 20 years, dude. We're Seriously? Old, yeah. No, no. 97? Yeah. You were doing comedy in 97? Yes. When did you start? 95. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you stayed in San Diego? You no, no, no. Two years in. So I met you in 97 because of the fact that... When did you move to LA? 97. Yeah, that's when I, I met, met you. Right, I right met then. you in San Diego, I think. Well, then I met you even more longer. La Jolla? Yeah. No, 97. It was 97, but I think I met you in La Jolla. Maybe, maybe. Yeah, you yeah. were like one of the hot shots in La Jolla. Yeah, you came probably down with Rogan or maybe... No, Rogan. No, no, no. I came down there. And she used to have crazy shows then. And on Wednesdays, yeah. I used to always do Latino nights. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Me, Noe Gonzalez. Sure. Uh, the thicker Mexican guy. She only had five regulars. <laughs> no and way. Carlos. Yeah. And Freddie. Freddie Soto, yeah. So it was me, Marilyn Noe, Martinez. Freddie, Marilyn. Yeah, yeah. So it was nine out of ten times. It was me, Marilyn, and Noe. God. It's unbelievable. And then I, I met you. you. you I went to Latino the, Laugh Festival, probably in San Antonio. I probably right. met you there. But you were one of the big shots down there. No, like you man. I was the only gook out in there. But you were one of the ones that people were talking about. So well, was, I don't know if they were saying that, but yeah, I was open yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it doesn't oh, matter. Thanks, man. I love it. And you were tight with Shama, and you know, you guys yeah, were yeah. making it happen. Mm-hmm. And then we met, and then you were regular at the comedy store. Uh, I, got addicted, loved you. I got addicted to drugs. 
Now, when did you get into drugs? Before when that? I got on Mad TV. No. Yeah, I was sober for twelve years, right? Then okay. I, okay. So we had I, this talk. You had gone to a rehab for heroin when you were sixteen. Seventeen. Yeah. Seventeen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you stayed sober for, for a twelve long years. Time. Yeah. And then. Then I got on Mad TV, and the first day I was there, they just said. One of the producers said, I'm not going to name names because we're friends right. or whatever, but he said that I don't think that you're that funny and that we're not going to use you a lot. You know, that's what he said to me, dude. First day? Like maybe the first week or something. And so after he said that, I was just like, nah, I can't. I started doing drugs again. I couldn't handle it emotionally. When well, did you start doing heroin? Well, I was a 15 back then, but then I didn't relapse on heroin. I took Vicodin and stuff. Remember, I was a pill head, and I used to smuggle it. I used to smuggle it across state, and then I used to go down to Tijuana because they don't sell Vicodin in Mexico because they don't make it there. But I used to bring Somas and Valium and all that shit, and we used to just fucking – I used to have a pill box. I used to come to the comedy store and give it away like candy, remember? I don't remember. Yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't know if you were – I, I was the Coke guy. I know. You were I never. You never gave me any. You didn't like it. I know. You don't like really it. offer, you know. <laughs> I like the offer. If you offered, then I would be like, no, I don't thank you. It's uh, <clears throat> it's really weird that we're sitting across from each other. We both had the drug problems, mm. and now our lives are in focus. And you don't right? do no no more coke. No, I just smoke reefer. Seven years, no coke. Wow, that's great. No rehab, no mm -hmm. hugs, no nothing. Just yeah, I had dead. to do a full turkey, man. I just nothing. Because if I smoke pot, then it's then it's like then. It, it'll spiral down. I, I think if I don't smoke pot, that eventually my temper would flare or something, and I'd be down at the doctor's office getting Valium mm. or something for a yeah. mood, something. Eventually, they have to give me something to balance me out. Uh, it's the people that are walking around that are crazy, that don't know they're crazy. They're the fucked up ones. If you're crazy, but you keep it in check, and you yourself know you're crazy, and you avoid the things to make you crazy, yeah. you're okay. You're halfway there. You know, I realized at like 24 that something wasn't right. And then when I went to prison and I got out. Would you hit somebody over the head with a pipe or something? No, I kidnapped somebody. Oh, that's Big right. difference. In fact, he called me yesterday. <laughs> We've been playing phone tennis. Uh, I, I, uh, got, I, I gave him th a, a hot UA when I was in the halfway house. Mm -hmm. And... They, eat, they they put you in jail for those in Boulder. I had a good attorney, and he fought for me to go to a rehab. And I ended up going to an outpatient. Like, everything was booked up, thank God. Cause they were like so that means, you don't, that means you live at home, inpatients you, where you live I, there. I live in the halfway house. So basically, I was going to my job and then going to the, uh, going to the uh, halfway house from 6 to 9 was the outpatient for six weeks. Monday through Friday, six to nine. They'd piss you Monday, mm. and they'd piss you Friday or something. I forget what the fuck it was. Along with the piss test, I was taking it the other time, and that was the first time in my life at the age of twenty-seven that I had ever been sat down and done those things where you talk to people. Were you in comedy then? Not even. <laughs> the only comedy in my life was when I put a gun out <laughs> and said, "Give me your money," and, then, and the gun went. <laughs> That's the only comedy in my yeah. life in those days. It's my I favorite was, kind of comedy. I was, uh, I was just a kid, you know, yeah, yeah. twenty fucking seven, bro. You know, these people in America today, these people who listen to the podcast, long oh, you turn your life around. Listen, after a while, you got two choices: either you turn it around or you die. Is it that tough to turn your life around? Yes and no, depending on how you look at it. It all starts with a job and going to bed and washing your pussy and getting up in the morning and drinking coffee. and It's a process, and some people can handle it, and some people can't fucking handle it, you know? I still can't fucking handle it, yeah. but I go through it every day. So that's the only reason why. That's the excuse I give myself for smoking weed. You do, do what do you do. It keeps me yeah, do what you do. going. I'm not shoplifting. I'm not hitting people in the head, and I'm not breaking lighter. into the house. I haven't robbed the lighter. They've been putting them out for me lately. The 7-Elevens, <laughs> they've been trying to bait me. Uh -huh. The one on Kurson's been fucking with me. Every time I go to that one yeah. by the comedy store, they've been leaving them out. That's the one I killed. I broke my own record in there like eight times. I would take people in there and show them. You took me. Did I take a lighter in front of you? You took me to? like, look, I'm going to put my hand in my pocket to they make them think I'm grabbing money, but I'm really grabbing a lighter and putting it in my pocket. Like, you had a whole system. Oh my God, it's crazy! But that comedy true. saved me, though. Did it save you? Yes. Because remember, I was when I was seventeen. I'd been to three rehabs, right? 
I was the only Asian guy that got all Fs. Like I was just people. My, my parents thought I had Down syndrome. They really did. They they took me to like a doctor and everything. They go, he doesn't have Down syndrome. How come he could or if he's just stupid, you know? But it's like without comedy, I would be fucking. I don't know what I'd be doing. I have no skill set, you know. So sobriety and also comedy saved my life. If anyone out there is like thinking about doing it, just do it because it will literally. It'll turn your life around. It'll change if you're good. It'll change everything in your life. Well, how long ago was Mad TV? Because I remember you on TV. I know I don't have my hair, but I, I'm only 26. So like I, I remember you. I thought like middle school, definitely high school. You were. On how many TV. years were you on? I was on it for eight years. Wow, my God. I, I, so I I was around when you booked it. Yeah. And then you went off the deep end. Yeah. And they liked you so much. They told you they had an intervention. They made you go back at eight o'clock at night. I remember you telling me all these stories somewhere. Well, I, I mean, I, Ari Shafir has a Comedy Central. You did it too, right? The Comedy Central show. The right. one that's going to be on television, right. right? And I talked about how they gave me an intervention. And then okay. I was on Vicodin. I was taking 30 Vicodins a day. And then I, sh I shit my pants and a Connie Chung sketch live. How where many shit came out of my stockings, you know what I mean? And they said cut. I got fired. And then I got sober. And then I came back on the show for six years. Yeah. How, how many Vicodin, like, when you have an injury, are you supposed to take a day? Four? Two to four, yeah. Four, I was taking third. I was taking Brett Favre, like, yeah. 30 fucking Vicodins a day. And how many did you do that one weekend in Houston? You did a lot of I something. I did 30 Valiums. Oh, my God. In three days, Bobby Lee. Yeah, that'll put down a T-Rex, man. That, that, that put me <laughs> down. I was talking sideways. So Friday, like, I wouldn't even call the house because I was calling one day. How you doing, Bobby Lee? Who's this? It's Joey Diaz speaking to the phone. It's Joey Diaz speaking to the phone. It's Joey Diaz. It was fucking horrible. I didn't even go home. I checked my. I got out on a Sunday. I woke up in Beaumont, Texas, and I made Pete, the owner of the lap stop, take me to Intercontinental. And I got room service and all that Houston food. And I swear to God, by Wednesday, Thursday, I went to my buddy's house. Who was an attorney? I stayed with him, and I still couldn't talk. Like I didn't. Why'd you take that many? Because I had him. Ah, oh, you had him. Do you follow me? Yeah, I, I went to you. I got the Beaumont on a Thursday, and I asked. Because normal people would let me give him out, but no, you have to take it. It was fucking Bobby. You've been there. I know. We've been there. Where it's just a. Uh, I went down there to get blow in Beaumont. I was doing the weekend at Beaumont, and I went to get powder, and there was no powder. But I go, what does the guy have? And he goes, he's got Valium. You know what? I don't know. I like Valium, but give me 30 of them. <laughs> you know? Because yeah. I knew in those days, I knew a couple comics who liked them. Yeah. Again, you, the bring, you buy them for your comic friends. You know? Even if I took five, I'd still give away 20, 20 and I'd keep five at the house for those nights when I got dead dick, and I want to get my dick or whatever, you know? And I went down and I had him, i never forget this, I had him in a brown bag, like a brown bodega bag, you know, like a beer can yeah, bag. Yeah. And I had him in there. <laughs> and I would just keep going in there and eating them. Uh -huh. and, but the, the, the Friday was sickening because I had no weed. So I had no weed either, so I was eating the Valiums. So I started like at seven in the morning. Valiums only burn halfway, the rest go into your fat. I was 400 fucking pounds. They were all over my, and I kept popping them, you know. And you had to perform that way? I went, and I, st I, got, I got on the floor the first night and did my comedy on Mitch Hedberg on the floor. You did it shit. lying down? Yeah, it's Josh Wolf. It was, people knew. Then Saturday, I kept eating them, eating them, and then the Coke came. Then uh. I mixed it with Jägermeister, and I just went. And then there was a little hot freak that was at Beaumont. We started talking, and she was going to drive her boyfriend home and come back to the hotel. So we were going back and forth. Then she showed up and she put a bikini on the room. Oh, wow. And we started eating fucking volumes and doing powder. Then I ran out of blow at like 7 in the morning. And I called my friend's younger brother. He came and got me and took me to like the worst part of Beaumont where there's no Latinos, no Mexicans, no Chinese. It's just white people that hate everybody. And they took me deep into a cabin and we bought an eight ball. It was the best blow I ever did. It was mixed with hatred. You could tell it was, <laughs> it was cocaine cut with <laughs> hatred, though. I was fucked up. Bobby Lad went back. She was naked playing with a pussy when I walked in the hotel. I never seen nothing like that. Wow. She was just playing with a pussy. It was like on fire. It was juicing everywhere. And I took my dick out and tried to get it hard. I had my. It was fucking like the. I never even told the story. Like, it was just the creepiest 
drug story, like at the end. This is 2005, after The Longest Yard came out. I was just going for it. Like, I was fucking gone. I walk in the hotel room, I close the door, and it was one of those things that you have to walk around, and it was two beds in the room, and she's balls ass naked, just fucking with five hands in there, fucking rubbing a clit. And I go over, and my dick is this big, and I'm fucking trying to whack off in her mouth, and it's not getting hard, and she's sucking it, and she's sucking, and she keeps going, I have a boyfriend, and she'd suck it for like another two minutes, and then you I love my boy, (laughs) this is the fucking, this is like the creepiest morning ever, and I'm hearing people at the hotel, they're in town for some Christian thing, and I'm hearing them get ready for church, and this is all going through your head, man, and finally, I, I ate more pills. And finally, like at 10, she goes, I got to go. My boyfriend's picking me up in a half hour. We're going to his parents for long. I'm like, you just sucked my dick, my dead dick, for three hours. You're going to sit there across from your mother-in-law? Are you fucking crazy? And I remember going for the bag, and they were gone. And going. And going, maybe she robbed me. And, uh, no, no. That's what I was thinking, too. Maybe no. She something? No, because no, she had two. She wasn't even a volume chick. She was a coke chick. And I didn't check into a rehab. I just checked it for a week and a half, and I came back to L.A. and kept an eye on the monkey. <laughs> got to keep an eye on the monkey. When you're at that point, you got to keep an eye on the monkey because you might OD. You're fresh to OD. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? As long as you know it is going in, though. Because this is, you know, I was doing a ton of coke then. Yeah. At night only, Bobby Lee. I wasn't a coke guy in the daytime. It would destroy me. You have coffee in the morning. In the morning. But here's the beauty of it. You said some words that were brilliant. You said comedy saved me. Comedy definitely saved me because it gave me a purpose. Yeah. It gave me the... uh, Whenever I did anything else, there was no purpose. I I fucking hated it. Anything else I did, Lee, whether it was uh, cooking or mixing concrete or painting, no matter what, even in a warehouse when I was getting union wages... I would do the math in my head. So I'm getting 17 an hour, eight hours a day. I'm making 150. Yeah. I need, you know what I'm saying? Like I need, you just start going, you know, I'm going to try to make money in what I want to do. And uh, yes, it did fucking save me. And it saved you too. You're like right. I have 28 first cousins. They all went to Ivy League schools. Right? So in high school, I was going to Palomar College, which is a junior college, like, you know, a community college. And like, I literally thought, Oh yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm not, I'm never, never gonna make any money. I couldn't get any pussy because I looked like a scallop, and like I just, you know, I girls didn't like me, and I had no money, confidence, nothing. And when as soon as I did, started doing stand up, I started getting girls and stuff. It was crazy, and then I just kept going. So it just definitely saved me. I thought I was gonna die alone with no money and poverty. When you were getting on stage all those years. What were you going for? Were you going for a mad TV type no, show? Were you going for a sick time? I don't know what I have no goal. Let me tell you this like, though. I'm telling you this right now, dude. I'm fucking. What, I mean, people say I'm a nice guy. Bobby's nice. I'm not nice when it comes to comedy. Even from the fucking beginning, you fuck with my stage time. Like if I hear somebody badmouth me with a promoter or somebody that was booking a room, I would do everything I can to fuck that person. Like in terms of stand up. You know what I mean? I have no sympathy, and I'm fucking cutthroat, dude, and I'm, I'm an opportunistic person. And so that's all I... I didn't have any gold, but I just knew this is something I wanted to do, and if you fucked with it, I was just a fucking maniac. My personal life, I'm cool. I'm honest. I'm, you know, I'm loving. I'll loan you money. I, whatever you need. But when it comes to comedy, dude, I will fuck you. First of all, this is the major leagues. What do you mean? If you're going to do comedy and you start in Michigan or Boston or New Jersey or Colorado, those are the minor leagues. Everything your your effort in doing is to get here. Yeah. Or to New York. You know, you're striving to go to New York. I'm getting good enough. I'm getting 32 minutes. You know, I'm getting 38 minutes. So when I go to New York, I get killed. You know, that's what you're putting together. You're putting money away every week in the bank. You're getting to know different people. When you get here, this is the major league. And I could look at somebody now, no matter how much heat he has, and I could tell you whether he's going to make it or not, just by looking, just how, because we've yeah. seen them come yeah. and go. Legends, Montreal, yeah, people we looked at be, and said, oh my God, we're dude, dead. There was a girl in 99, went to Montreal. I'm not going to say her name. I know her name, but um, she went, she had been doing comedy for six months. She went to Montreal. She got a half a million dollar deal from Warner Brothers, right? 
And I was a doorman at the comedy store in Hollywood. I was making a dollar a day. Like, it was fucking sad. And I used to get angry, like, fuck, this girl's not even that good. You know what I mean? I haven't seen her since. You know, because she's not as, I'm a roach. You have to be a cockroach. You know, I'm willing to suffer and, and sit in the pain. You know, I'm just like, you know, but if you have to be strong. I'm a pussy. Like, if you fought me, dude, I would, my, my, I have like brittle bones. You know what I mean? I have no muscle in my body. I'm just pure fat. But, dude, in the inside, I'm a fucking roach. Well, you were talking about when you came in, you said it's, like, hard sometimes being an actor and waiting for a decision. It must be hard also waiting when you're first starting out, waiting for headlining gigs or, or other gigs. So it's, like, it's not it's not exactly a fun – that's not a fun part of the job. Even when I used to work in TV, every three months I'd be looking for a job just because that's how TV is. And my friends thought I was crazy out here. They're like, we have a job, and I hope to work here for 20 years. And I'm like – uh, just not how it works out here, so it's like that. That not everyone could deal with like going to an audition and just never hearing back. One thing that I have in common with Bobby that why Bobby's feelings are hurt that I didn't ask him to come on the podcast. I was kidding, by the way. No, I'm I know, I know, I'm place, I know. Yeah. But uh, one of the things that I don't, I don't have much. I don't have much when it comes to comedy. But I'm gonna tell you something. I'm a comedy store comic. That's big. We're the Marines. We're the ones that jump off parachutes and shit to bring you fucking real comedy. And we're, we're the last of the Mitzi Shore products. Yeah. We're the last. I, I don't have a lot to say. You don't see me on a TV show every week. You don't see me driving over Maserati. But I will tell you what. I'm one of the last generation that she said. And I seen her throw some savages out of that. Yeah. And she fucking handpicked me from the fucking jump. You know, three minutes to seven minutes to ten minutes. Can you can you do ten minutes for me next week? Okay, see you. And I didn't kiss her ass. I didn't sit next to her. I took that motherfucking ran like a savage. We're the last of that generation. These kids that are coming up now at the comedy store, it's the comedy store. It's not the Mitzi Shore generation. No, they're brutal. The comedy store has changed a lot. The exterior has changed a lot. The patois of it, which I love. I love the evolution of something. Because we started when in the 90s, right, when comedy was at the lowest point. Because the big television boom happened in the late 80s and the early 90s. And in the light, late 90s, it was dying. It was like one of the lowest forms of, uh, of show business, you know. So it's like the clubs, you had way more comics than there should have been. And little stage time, which creates a really like an aggressive and hostile environment. So it's like when you're at the comedy store, you have no money and there's a thousand people signing up for open mic and you have to be able to like, you know, weave your way through that, you know, and we're, and Joe and I were a part of that generation of guys that like now it's like there's internet, like you can be famous just by doing a video at, in your bedroom, you know, but back then that was the route. Mitzi you know? sure didn't give a fuck. She would throw you to the fucking lion. Yeah, she would. And that's why I'm lion proof. What would you do? Like, because it made you laugh. Put you up for a year at 1245 mm. following Domerer. Every or day. even something worse. Somebody that's like not even good. You know, like they'll put you up. Or I'm not going to name names, but like she was people that are were, yeah. like the worst comics you've ever seen. And you'd have to go up after the in front of five people. At one thirty in the morning, in front of the worst comic you've ever seen, did and you, you do that for years. Did you hate her during it? Because I had, like I had a bad boss when I first moved out here, who I hated during it, but now I see that she helped me. But bet you didn't hate her. I knew that there's a thousand comedians. One night there was a dude when I first got out there. I was I was out there maybe three months, and it was twelve forty five. I was scratching for a bump of coke, but I couldn't do it till I got off stage. And there was a kid complaining. And somebody, I think it was Paul Mooney, said, you don't want your spot? Put a list out there and sign up for it. See how many people sign up for your 2 o'clock in the morning spot? You should be grateful. And I sat there and said, he's right. I didn't, I didn't just learn from Mitzi Shaw. I learned from Paul Mooney. Yeah. I learned from a lot of guys that I saw them go up there and what was going on with their lives. Dice was still coming up a, a lot. lot. Yeah, a lot. Well, how, how long did it take you, Bob? Because I knew... Oh, that's I, right. We were bad boys of comedy. Yeah, yeah. Me, you, and Jim Norton. Yeah, Norton. yeah, me, Dice, Jim Norton. We went to Vegas. We yeah, went to Vegas, Vegas so, yeah. with Dr. Oh, Happy. Cool. Yeah, that Mr. was a long time ago. That was Riviera? Uh, yeah. No, it was... Yeah. No. Bally's. 
Bally's. It was Bally's. They had a, a dish of fucking cold cuts in the room. Yeah. You and I thought it was like, <laughs> we had just made it. The comedy show was so brutal that, like, the audiences were two were gang members or, you know, like, just vampires, you know what I mean? And they they weren't regular human beings, right? Well, how many times did you go to get past? I, I got past the first time she saw Oh, really? Me. Yeah, I was lucky. I, when I asked if you hated her, like, already talked about doing it, like, 20 times or something crazy like that. He must have hated her at some point. Yeah, but Howie Mandel showcased 48 times. Wow. Yeah, so, um, but the thing is, is that when I did Leno for the first time in 2000, they asked me, are you scared? I go, I'm not, I play, I'm from the comedy store. This is, <laughs> this is easy. These are regular people. I perform in front of Twilight Vampires. They'll bite your dick after the show. You and know? she'd come up to you and say shit. Like, you'd walk in. You wouldn't know what was really going on. No. You'd walk in the room on a Sunday. And you'd go walk up the stairs to check in at the booth. And as you're making that turn, that's Mitzi motherfucking Shaw. And she's drinking her little drinks. She ain't going nowhere. She's got a menu in her hand. She's got glasses on. And you're up in 15 She minutes. also looks like a warlock. Yeah. And yeah you like think she's from, like, Lord of the Rings. Like, she has a cape. Scarves around her head. You don't know what it's like to bomb in front of Mitzi Show. Oh, my God. Oh. Oh. You fucking go home. Do you remember a time? Fuck yes, I remember a time. Fuck yes. You also can hear her talk. So it's like when you're bombing, you can hear this. <laughs> Light them. And yeah. when, when they say, when she says that, your heart, your heart just, just, just disintegrates. She never lit me like that. She never lit me. I did see her throw out. Two or three comments. Give him the lie. <laughs> One night she went off. Bill Hicks, my ass. He's terrible. Give him the fucking light. Give him the fucking light. She just went off. She never did that to me. She always let me come off. And then she go, I have an idea for you. I want you to grow your beard and put a handcuff on and tell him you're Fidel's nephew. I think we'd make a riot. We could sell that to TV. And you go, okay, Mitch. You know what she did to George Lopez, right? George Lopez auditioned for her, right? And... Minute in, she, she she goes line up, and George Lopez just snap. Hey, bitch! You know what I mean? I've been on this, this, this. You know, like thing, saying his credits. He, she did that to Louis C.K. too. One minute in, this is after his HBO specials. Line up. I'm, we turned to Mitzi and go. He's like the best comic in the country. What are you doing? That's why when she she had to she had to go because she was losing her mind. Uh, I love her, but like when you're saying. Light it to Louis, Louis C.K. You're out of t touch a little bit. She didn't like jo uh, Jerry Seinfeld either. Yeah, she didn't like Jerry Seinfeld. She didn't like a lot of people. Yeah, man. she, just didn't she doesn't like what like straight lace white dudes. No, you know what I mean like regular old white dudes. She, you need to have like an, you have to be an albino midget or nine foot Samoan. Like she likes like you know what I mean like a little catch. You know what I mean? She, she like listen, redheaded I, black eyes. Like if yeah. I'm lying to you, may I, from day one. I mean, from my first nine months in comedy, people come up to me and go, is Mitzi Shaw seen you yet? Yeah. People would always ask me, is Mitzi Shaw seen you yet? And so I always knew that my home was the comedy Yeah, store. yeah, yeah. I was just very fortunate to be get put on there. So now, forget the fucking comedy <laughs> store. You go to rehab, you come back on Mad TV, and you just knock it out of the park after that. What well, was the I difference? Don't know, man. It's like, what was the I difference? I can't, dude, this is what happened, dude. Instead of letting them dictate how I feel about myself, so it's like you know on Mondays you you know people pitch and they write and then Tuesdays a table read and I wouldn't be anything. So Mondays what I would do is I would just when I got sober I would just stay there all night and either write or I would pitch and I would wait I would just work really hard and then by year three you could tell that I was going to stay on it as long as I wanted to, which was like as soon as that happened I was fine. But like everything in, in this business, you have to go in and you have to fucking fight it out, you know? And I'm a pussy dude and this and that, you know what I mean? I am, but in terms of like, there are some things that I've done that I've been really proud of myself about. And that was one of them, just be able to stick, stick it out without snapping or like killing myself really, you know? But it's like, even now I stayed on it for six years and then got canceled and I've now been on, I've been on the road ever since. <laughs> It's does dismal, dude. Two years ago, bro, I was on fire, dude. I was on. I was in the Dictator. I was in Harold and Kumar three, and then I got on a sitcom, the NBC show Animal Practice. And as soon as Animal Practice got canceled, two years, nothing. Animal Practice. Yeah, I was at, and that monkey show that right, I was the on. Monkey yeah, show. yeah, the That's monkey show it, I was yeah. on. Yeah, I was on a monkey show, and the monkey, dude, the monkey. <laughs> 
<laughs> He's at about 400 milligrams of THC. So, dude, dude, you can't choose who you work with. When you show up, nigga, there's a monkey on it. You got, you gotta go. You can't go. I, I don't want to do it. And there was like, dude, there was one scene where like, like literally, like it's close up on my face in the back of the monkey's face, and I did a take that was perfect. And they go, the monkey moved its head. I go, fuck monkey, you stupid fucking monkey. Like it was, they're impossible to work with. One time I turned around, it was literally going, it was touching its little vagina. Going, did it smell? I don't know if I, I don't know. If it's Not the vagina. <laughs> did, <laughs> did the fucking monkeys think? Like when the monkey came in the room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, the, it smelled like a horse came in. It's also like a hot chick, right? So as soon as like a monkey walks in, it's like all the attention goes toward the monkey. So you're like, fuck me, I gotta get off this fucking thing. This is not gonna work for me. <laughs> you, ever, you did a movie with a dog. Is it harder with a dog? It's fucking just unpredictable. But now, these guys that I do these movies with have it to a science, because it's six movies we've done. So now they know exactly how to cut. And the, the first two I did with a fucking dog, I love the dog. Lana, she's great. She's a great dog. She's still around. Gary Valentine has her little puppy sister. The problem is that they can't be on the set for long hours. You know, you have to pay for an animal person to oh, come man. out, and no one has to take a break every forty-five minutes to get oxygen and for his eyeballs to adjust. And it's fucking crazy. So we had a full-blown animal clinic. Like aside, like we had to have stables and veterinarians because Peter was gonna fuck us. So they, we just they they get really there's a lot of rules, man. When it comes to animals, you know, you gotta have a body double for the monkey. In case, <laughs> you gotta have like a yeah. Just get Noe Gonzalez, you know. What I mean? Yeah, no, you have that, like let's say you have like you, a, a a stand-in dog. There's a stand-in dog, and then but let's say you want to hit that dog with a car. What what do you think you do? You gotta get like a fucking uh, a dog to lay down. They shoot it before the car hits it, and then they they pull it back. Now they get the fucking dummy dog and they put it underneath. He's a dead dog. It's like a, a, a stuffed dog. Okay, you mean like a stuffed animal? Right. You know, the, mean like, you know, oh, yeah. they, they show it. And they go a, to like the shelter and pick up like a stray. Right. But sometimes, if you watch a movie, they just use a shitty dead animal, like a, a stuffed animal. That a kid could tell that's a fake. Yeah. You know, so it's just, it's tough to shoot with an animal. It's very tough to shoot with kids. Yeah. I heard kids are tough too because they got to go to school. Every fucking set I've been on that's had kids, the school teachers, they're all fucked up. <laughs> they're all fucked up. What do you mean? All, and they're always men, and they're all fucked up. Like the you one guy I like met has his eyes are too spread apart. <laughs> <laughs> he was a white. He was a white dude. <laughs> 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 you ever thought about that for way too long? Yeah. yeah. No, I swear. Yeah, googly God. eyes. He had like fucked up eyes. Fish eyes. I call him fish eyes. Like that comic Mark Ellis, he's got googly eyes. Right, but the one we saw, face. the one we saw last week for the dog movie was the worst. He was like an old guy with like a hat, and every time he'd sit down at crab service, people would just get up and walk away. Oh. He was that fucking creepy. So I don't know who hires these sack teachers. Yeah, I, I hate when extras talk to me. Really? Yeah, well, I'll tell you why. Why? Because it's like it's always a dude. The last thing I did, right? Where there was extras, and they were all like open micers. I started in the '90s, but now they're all professional extras. So then I'm talking. You're talking to like the producers or whatever, and then they come sit next to you, like because we're friends, because we started together. It's like no, man, not in this environment. In this environment, you're like a plant or a lamp fixture. So go do that. You know what I mean? While I do this. <laughs> In, no, dude, in a comic, yeah, fine. You're going to go up on stage and that. But, dude, in a, a thing, when I'm talking to producers, because they, they, they want to get they want to get hired, right? So they hover around you like they were friends, you know? And then they, you know, and they try to be funny in front of, like, the director. So then they get a line. It's fucking sad, bro. So I have to, like, what? You're looking at me like I'm a fucking asshole? No, because it just happened to me last week. Tell me what happened. It's... Because of the comedy store, yeah. from the beginning, I always had a little dignity. If I wouldn't have had the comedy store from the beginning, I think I would have been one of those guys. But because I always knew that no matter what happens on this stupid set, I always had the comedy store, 1145. Even if Paramount calls Mitzi and says, Joe Diaz cursed out a director, 
Missy Tone, good. Go fuck yourself and hang up the phone. Yeah. That's my boy. You know, she yeah. loved all that shit. That's what she thrived on. So when I went when I go on those sets, I always used to see comics. Like the first three or four jobs I went on, I used to see comics mm -hmm. and how they acted. And I go, I'm not gonna act like these guys. Like they'd be making jokes all day and yeah. They always had a, you know, always had to say something. Or if an extra knew, knew, knew how to sing, they would just sing spontaneously. Oh, know? it's it's fucking. Hard. It's so sad. It's really sad. So I I knew how to act. I always knew just to keep your fucking mouth shut. If you're doing a scene and you already got them, ask the dude. Listen, I want to try something. Yeah. And nine out of ten, they'll keep your shit. You know, but I never act creepy. I never did that. Last week, I get on. I my last day on the set, I pull up. And we got the podcast. You know, people say hello. I talk to them. What do you want me to do? I, you know, they listen to the podcast. Whatever. I don't fucking know. A, a thousand people say fucking hello. I, you don't know from what venue they could be saying hello, you know? And this guy is talking to me, but he talks to me in Spanish. Guys, I'm fucking deaf. <laughs> I'm fucking deaf. It's seven in the morning, and you want to talk to me in fucking Spanish from a far distance. Like from 10 feet away. I don't know what the fucking guy is saying. I'm just smiling. You know me. I just <laughs> smile and shake my head like I know what the fuck you're talking about. Just to be like polite. <laughs> and I kept pouring oatmeal on my dish and I poured the fucking cancer sugar on it. Yeah, and then yeah. he gets over and he talks to me and he goes, where are you from? And I tell him New Jersey. He goes, no, you're Spanish. Yeah. I'm Cuban. He tells me he's Puerto Rican. I'm, okay, nice to meet you. You know, and I didn't know. I thought he was the fucking guy that was helping with the food. Yeah. Right? So I don't know nothing. I don't ask questions, but I don't give a fuck. Yeah. You know, I go to my trailer. I got everything in my trailer. That trailer I worked in last week was the size. I've been in bigger jail cells. <laughs> okay? I've been in bigger fucking jail cells. Okay? Not even a mirror, a couch, a couch you couldn't even sit on, a chair, and a thing, and a little bathroom I didn't even fit in. It was like a, I had to go to the bathroom sideways, like an airplane. Right? This is how small it was. All right? I got everything in there. I got my iPod, I got a notebook, I got a couple of pens, I got my glasses, I brought a Dr. J book, all right? I got reefer, I got rolling papers, I got a couple of lighters, I got an edible, I got water. I got everything in there. I'll go in that fucking trailer for four hours. You know me, dog. We don't need nothing, I don't need to talk. I don't need to talk to nobody. So I say goodbye. I don't know. I thought he fucking worked in the fucking kitchen. Okay, that's what I thought. He was a Spanish dude and he was watching the breakfast, okay? Yeah. Next thing you know, they call for a body double for Dean Kane. And guess who it is? The cook. <laughs> the Puerto Rican kid, right? Uh -huh. And I'm like, hey, how you doing? Hey, yeah. Yeah, so we do the scene, blah, blah, blah. Dean Kane pulls over and boom, boom. And he comes right over to me. He's like, what are you doing in this? And I go, I'm one of the guys, I'm one of the thieves. And he goes, uh, they've done like six of them. Have you done all of them? Yeah. And he goes, do you, have they all been big roles? And I'm like, whatever, you know. Yeah, you know. And who's the producer? And you know me, I don't know nothing. Yeah. I don't know. Somewhere in there, go ask around. Who's the director? I don't know. <laughs> you know me, I just show up, they tell me, stand there. <laughs> I do what I do. Well, you know who the director is? I know who he is, but I, he don't need to know. What's with the question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 7.45. In the also, morning, yeah, yeah. I don't need the you fucking need, questions. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's just fucking terrible. And then <laughs> I do the scene with him. The scene's over. We move on to the next scene. Yeah. Now he's out of costume, lurking with a bag. And I can see that he has headshots in there and shit, right? I'm watching all this. This is what I do. I'm a professional. Just in case you had a half a million there. From the old days. I don't know. I just picked up a bad habit. So now he was sitting there in between scenes. They just blocked. And was sitting there waiting for them to put the cameras in the room. And he walks over to the circle. To the fucking directors and the producers. Before I didn't know where they were going to sit. It was a chair. It was cold out. I had a hooded sweatshirt on. I sat in the last fucking chair and put my hooded sweatshirt on. Then they started sitting next to me, talking about the next scene. Yeah. Huh? So fucking Pablo here jumps in the circle. That's what. Oh, that's it. That's what I'm saying. But here's where it gets ugly, guys. You ready for what he does? Uh, no. He starts talking to me in Spanish. 
in front of five white people. Oh. Which is just very rude. Yeah. And he keeps doing it. And I'm like, hey, man, yeah, I'm talking to him in English, trying to change the conversation. He's asking me in Spanish, who's the guy here I got to talk to to get put on this movie? And I'm sitting there. You guys, you have, up. you have no fucking... You fucked up. Me? You fucked up. Me? Yeah. Why me? You shouldn't have talked to him in the first place. Guy, come on. No, you I'm... Say hello look to, at, no, no, you gotta no. You got to say hello to everybody. No, you, you don't. Say, Guy, what are look you going to do? He's talking. No. Some little Chinese guy comes up to you on a movie set. I go, who are you? He's by the fucking food. I, I'm going right? to tell you how it goes. Okay, bro, hey, drop it on me. Hey, how you doing, Bobby? I'm Jing Jing. Oh, hey, Jing Jing. What do you do? Uh, extra. I walk away. I couldn't hear this fucking guy. He right. was telling me. Hey, Ching Ching, don't talk to me ever That's again. Why you move on. Fuck, no, Lee. No, 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 no. You Bobby fucked Lee, up. You gotta be nice to people. You gotta say hello and good Not morning. in that situation, you fuck. No, I'm on a movie set. You gotta be nice to everybody. How about this? Hi, I'm Ching Ching. What do you do? I director. Hi, Ching Ching. Ching Ching's the director. I wanna say hello. What you did was fucked up. I didn't fuck up, Bobby. Well, then tell me what happens then. So now, he, now you're in a situation where this guy could fucking sabotage your shit. No. You know me better than that, though. Tell me what happened. I'll throw him over the fucking <laughs> yeah. before he does something like that. So he keeps asking me. And I excuse myself. And I take him over. And I go, first off, look at those people. You see anybody there in Spanish? No. Well, then why the fuck are you talking Spanish for? You're saying this out loud in front of the people. No, no, no. You know me. I'm a professional. Oh, you do it still last silent. And I go, number two. Yeah. Yeah, he goes, you know what his answer was? What? Well, in Miami, everybody talks Spanish. This ain't fucking Miami. These are white people. This Don't take a fucking five bit. They're fucking retarded. You fucked up. No, bro. I didn't fuck up. I don't. <laughs> you have to listen. No, you don't. You don't, really. When I get on a set and, and there's extras there and a couple, I say hello to them because... A, I was very fortunate. I was maybe an extra one time in Seattle carrying boxes in a, in a, one of those, uh, what do they call those movies when they... Industrials? Industrials. I was never an extra. Do you see how they treat those animals? Yeah. It's horrific. <laughs> but they chose to do be messages. It's not like... I were... understand. I understand, but maybe they don't know what they're getting themselves into and they're not like you and no. I who go with us. But I... I gotta go. You can understand both sides. Like, you, you, Bobby might you might have been nice at one point, but then something like this happens, and then now Joey, I know you're not going to, but you would be. It would be okay for you to be like, "Fuck it, I can't talk to anyone anymore," because then like I'm going to tell you a thing, okay? I was on the league recently, right? And my friend Deanna was an extra because she needs extra money, right? Deanna, and I, Deanna, and I are very close friends. I didn't notice she was going to be there. She saw me. From, she was in the stable where all the, all the actors were. She saw me. She smiled. I smiled. She didn't talk to me once. I'm very good friends with her, right? Because she instinctually knows, right? You have to instinctually know where you're at. And if you don't, I'm sorry for yelling to you, right? But if you don't know, then know. Get to know it. You have to know. You have to know. You have to know when to speak and when to just sit there and nod like, like a fucking moment. Yeah, for me, it's like when a director's talking, I don't shut, shut the fuck up and listen. Hey, we, we need you to do this. Can I tell you what happened once? Can yes. I, tell you, oh, I was on The Dictator, the movie with Sasha. My first scene was, I was so nervous. I was with Ed Norton, where we're coming out of a, a bathroom. Larry Charles, right, says to me, come out, the camera's gonna be here, hit your mark, make sure your le head is turned to the left, because then we can, the light's on your face, and then do your lines and this and that, right? I go in the bathroom with Ed Norton. You know what Ed Norton says? Don't do it that way. I go, what? He goes, do it this way. This is better. So what you're going to do is you're going to go out. Don't turn to the left. Go to the right. And I'm going to do this. And in my head, it's like, what do I do? Do I follow Ed Norton or the director? Always the director. You know what I said to Ed Norton? I go, you know what? I'm going to try it Larry's way first, and then I'll try it your way second. He goes, okay, good idea. But the thing is, is that you have to know where you're at. Right. You have to know who you're... You know, I'm not going to listen to Ed Norton. He's not the captain of the ship. Right? And these extras, they have to know where they are. They're the people that, you know, in the bottom where they clean the toilet, whatever they do in the ship. You know I, what I mean? I, I've been very lucky. I'm not a comic, but I've, gone, I've been in a lot of green rooms with Joey and other comics. And Joey knows I hate it, especially when he gets me this high. I think people who are uncomfortable to be there are uncomfortable with silence or uncomfortable with it just being a normal interaction. Where they, they they always talk too much. They always try to have, they have weird laughs. They like they try they they don't like it when it's quiet. 
Like, when I first met Joey, I was terrified to meet Joey because he was on TV. I've been very lucky that I've met a bunch of cool people now and it's, it's not as big of a deal. And I, I understand why, but I think that's the biggest issue. Is that they're afraid of it being quiet. No, that's not what it is. Listen, you have gut instinct. The reason why you're in this situation with Joey right now is because I don't know you at all, right? But you know how to play it, all right? So that's you. I have a little bit of that. But no, no, you listen you to me. You know how to play it. You know how to play it because you're in this situation. I was doing the Houston Improv once and the host, I don't know him. They use a local guy. His first line to me is this. I don't know. You know why I'm hosting. I'm a headliner. I go, you're fired. You are fired. Get off. Get out of here. I don't let people like you're be grateful for what you have. Don't come up with your machismo. I've never heard of you, dog. Right. So it's he doesn't know his place. You do. You don't think I know. I know. Listen to me right now, dude. If I, I'm sorry for yelling, but if I was, dude, if I'm in a situation, right, and I'm sitting there with Barack Obama, right, and Putin, and I'm just sitting there, I ain't gonna say shit, right? I have to know my place. I'm gonna if they want if, if Putin goes, give me water. I'll get a good water. Barack said, give me a sandwich. I'll go get a sandwich. I'll go drive. Who taught you this? Did it's called good it? instinct. It's like it's like being just being knowing. Like in Koreans, we have this thing, well, respect your elders, right? So it's like, if my uncle says, go get me water. If I said, no, uncle, I'm dead. I would just hear black, I'd black out, and then I would wake up in a hospital. You don't do that, right? You got to know your place, dude. I'm not saying I'm the shit, but I know my places. Nothing bothers me more. When people don't know their place. And at this <laughs> age, now, I just pray for them, Bobby. Yeah. I don't get mad no more because it seems like it's a different society and a lot of people just do not know how to act, how to sit there, how to approach you, how to... Very seldom. Yeah. Very seldom do people, especially... Uh, I don't even know how to describe them. It, it, it's when they want it, when they want you to do something for them. That's the weirdest interaction I always have. Lee has saw it. Lee saw it. Well, this, when people want to give me scripts, and yeah, it's yeah. very uncomfortable for me. I don't know what to say. I give me tags and I, I'm this. very outgoing, but then again, I'm very no. You have to learn, Joe. And you're very outgoing, but. I've seen you at the comedy store standing by a corner by yourself. Yeah, I don't know. Smoking I, a cigarette. Yeah, I don't let. No, no, no. No, no he's no, beautiful. No, no. But I, I think there's a difference, and I just want to make because we're not saying like the people who come to you at the show, like the fans of the podcast, right? Like your fans are amazing. after the show. The people from that TV. I, no, dude. Yeah. I say hi. To, I love my fans. I'll take a photo with anybody that wants a photo. I'll give you a hug. I'll talk. I don't give a fuck. That's not what I'm talking about. No, I, I understand, but I, I just didn't want people to misunderstand because you're talking about in a professional environment when your money depends Exa on this. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. You know, it's also you have to know if you have the power or not. I'll give you another example. I was on Harold and Kumar 3, right? The fucking medic, right, was one of those white dudes that thought he could do Asian jokes. So he'd walk up to me and go, I, he'd go, I got your headache medicine. I go, where is it? He got, well, you can't see? Ha 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 Because of my eyes, right? And I let him do it because I don't have the power, right? But one day he comes up and he goes, ching chong. He like, starts making an Asian noise. John Cho was there. And John goes, if you ever do that again, you're fired. To the guy. The guy got shocked and he walked away. See, I don't have the power in that situation, right? I'm a day player. I have like five lines. But John has the power. So let me tell you something. When you give me the power, I will unleash it. But I know instinctually, like, I don't know who this medic is. I don't want to cause any trouble because I don't have any power in this situation. You got to know the power. I should write a book, dude. My mom was very firm on that rule because I was raised in a room with a lot of adults. I was raised in a bar. So I couldn't just run up on a conversation and go, I want that. Like, I had to sit there and sit and listen to that conversation. And whenever I heard, I couldn't fucking really repeat it unless my mother repeated it to me later on. And if I would raise my voice for years in Spanish, it sounds a lot better. My mother would look at me and go, kids talk when roosters piss. Roosters don't piss. Something really weird. It was some animal. 
it don't piss. Uh huh. So she goes, the kids talk when this don't piss. Uh-huh. And then, you know, I was allowed to talk after the conversation, not about their conversation. I had that big time. You know, you have to know, um, know where you stand. It's yes, respect, I it's think. It's respect, and it's, there's, there's more to it. I, I forget that I'm stoned to the gills. Yeah, so I, I can tell you, you're fading. It's Friday, you yeah, know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? Like, it's, it's my... It's you're, Friday, you're, Friday clear, you're clear, and now you're going to fun, I fun, fun I, land. I didn't even call them for spots tonight, because I know I'm going to go with the family tonight to some uh, thing where they're singing Christmas carols. I'm going to watch Mercy run around. For forty minutes and drive my congratulations right, and drive my fucking wife crazy. That's great, dude. and then I'm gonna take him home and uh, watch uh, Shark Tank. Hopefully, it's a season finale. Whatever the fuck is crap. I don't know if it's on tonight. Whatever the fuck it is, but no, it's a it's a very rare, rare gift to know when to talk and when to keep your fucking mouth shut. And I've seen it on sets with people constantly, and that's what turned me off. I think it was basketball where it was very weird because it was the South Park guys and they were banging with a director. I forget who's the big director. Zucker. The Zucker brothers directed basketball. So that was the first time where I saw it and it was my first movie. It was my first anything. Yeah. So I really didn't know what to expect but I remember that's the experience I took from there. Were you nervous? Oh, Jesus Christ. And I, was a, and I was a physical, I was a psychological mess. I was on blow. You it's know, I'd, so intimidating when you first do a movie like that, it, it's you don't know what to do. you're scared. I remember when I did my first movie was Harold and Kumar, the first one. I wrote down every single word from my lines a thousand times me so too. I wouldn't forget me it. Too. And then I'd show up, and then they had Video Village where all the New Line Cinema executives were, and the director and producers. And you're like, I don't even know what I'm gonna do. I'm scared. Was that harder or easier with uh, improv or? Sketch. No, you don't even know, you please you they don't even you don't let you do it. You have to say the line. It wasn't that kind of movie where they're like, do whatever you want to oh, do. No, not Harold and Kumar with uh, Matt TV. That was still kind of scary, but movies are scarier, I think, because with television, it's you know you can try it a bunch of times, and with movies, you don't know, you know. Oh, so you try the sketches multiple times? Yeah, you'd shoot a sketch three or four times. Sometimes. Oh, okay, I didn't know that. It's pretty interesting. Yeah. How they shot Matt TV. But before we get to Matt TV, I gotta ask you something. <laughs> There's a couple different types of films, okay? And when I got to L.A., I did basketball. Basketball was a mistake audition. I was at 20th Century Fox reading for NYPD Blue, and I bumped into a casting director. She was walking out in the hall to see whose name was on the list. And she asked, are you here for an audition? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Read this. Banged it out fifty five hundred a week for six weeks. Oh my god! One line, two lines. Wow! I never did nothing like that. I never did nothing like that. I don't know the fucking Zucker Brothers, huh? Yeah. The South Park guys. I don't watch TV. I don't fucking South Park. All I know is you get there and I see Jenny McCarthy kicking a bag. Yeah. One of those standing dummies. She's kicking it outside in the sun. There's eighteen people watching it, and the sweat's dripping down her back. I went and banged one out, sat there and sweated out in that hot fucking trailer until I figured out there was air conditioning. I sat in there like a fucking victim in one of those, uh, like Adam Sandler in wow. the box. I didn't even know there was air conditioning. This was my first anything. You just like me. And the trailer was the size of this. Yeah, you just like It was me. the size of this. This was how big, this is how much money they spent back then. This is 15 years ago. I didn't know nothing on it. That day, I'm not going to lie to people. I, don't, I didn't know nothing. There was no acting class. I knew the comedy store, 11.45. If I got there before Paul Mooney, if he was running late, I get 11.45 before. Who was the chick that moved to New York that looked like a man? What do you mean? Boma Baker? No, no. She would be <laughs> hysterical. You don't know nothing, Lee. And all of a sudden, they call for you in the trailer. And they fight you go, yeah, they're ready for you. And you walk down and they go, all right, you got to stand on your line. Stand on your mark. What fuck? What mark are you talking about? Yeah. I don't know. And they're putting bean bags on my feet. And I'm like, what the they fuck? They say something you? like you're getting shot on the jib. Yeah. Like, what the fuck is a jib? What are you talking about? Okay, action. I said my line. That line I must have said 80 times. When I walked off that set, I go, I'll never work again. <laughs> that was my movie career down the two. Yeah. So six months later, when I got the call saying, hey, uh, we're having a premiere. If you'd like to show up, 
I'm like, what am I going to show up for you? People cut me out of the scene. They're like, no, you're not. We even put you in the trailer. I was like, come on. That's how fucked up it was. Yeah. Then I remember doing my first TV show for NBC. Nothing, Bobby. I didn't know nothing. By that time, I had taken a couple acting classes. And then I went and I fucking did uh, three episodes. But the first day, I didn't know nothing. You scared? Petrified. Yeah. Fear as you're I walking, know. like you're going to shit your pants. Like, like stand up. But at that time, I still went back to my roots. I could do you this. Have to. I went up in front of Mitzi Shaw. I could wipe my ass on this. I got this because of Mitzi Shaw. Then she started lingering. In those days, she used to linger on Mondays too, Bobby Lee. Yeah. <laughs> and she'd throw a tell on and shit like that. And Pablo Francisco and Dane <laughs> Cook and put me behind one of those savages or something. And then I'd, I'd go in between Dane Cook and uh, Eddie Griffin would show up and do six hours. Yeah. Oh. But, you know, she was lingering on Monday, so that confidence. And then one day I got a call at my house. Hey, man, they're looking for you on Mad TV. Mm. What are you talking about, Mad TV? I, I'm not a groundling. <laughs> I'm not a fucking groundling. Mad TV is not going to sing me. <laughs> are you fucking crazy? Sure enough. Oh, he did it. Boom, I went in, read for the check. He said, sit here, ref for some other chick. Can you shoot tomorrow? Yeah. No, can you rehearse tomorrow? I went in there. We didn't shoot in front of a live audience. That's what it's saved me. pre -tape. If I would have shot in front of a live audience for Mad TV, I would have got fired. <laughs> Why do you say that? Because I know. I, I would have fell apart at no, the you fucking you would, scenes. You wouldn't have. You wouldn't have. Oh, Bobby Lee, are you fucked? Not that early, Bobby. Not that early. That's being thrown to the wolves. That's 18-type shit going out there and hitting it in front of a live audience. But then you would have seen me do it, and you'd be like, oh, I can do that, because I would have fuck up. I would have never. I, I go line, and they go, it's yes. Yes. <laughs> I would have failed at the scene if Mad TV would have been in front of a live audience. When they told me it was taped, like I, I, got, I went home and I didn't do blow. Like I knew there was a guy. Was I in the scene? What? With you? No, oh. this was th four years before you. This was oh, a Soprano before, sketch. Oh. This was 2000. Will Sasso was in it. Will Sasso, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And the chick who I always see, she's always in Studio City there. Nicole Garcia, and uh, Nicole uh, Sullivan. Sullivan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nicole Garcia is who cast me. Yeah, Nicole's the best. The best. She's the best. And there was just a Lee, when I walked off the Mad TV set, that's the first time I really talked shit as a comedian. Because to me, I knew I wasn't going to be on Saturday Night Live. But I got Mad TV. Okay, what'd you get? Dad? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me bump somebody tonight, Mitzi Shaw. <laughs> Why are you bumping? Because I did Mad TV, Mitzi Shaw. Let me get up there and shit. And then you get bumped by James Stevens III <laughs> playing the fucking piano and shit. Oh, my God. Let me give some shout-outs oh. here real quick. Charlie Govella, I love you, cocksucker. Crash. Lance Armstrong, always on point. Brandon Johnson, Samson Varghese, you bad motherfucker, DP, Dan Pizzini, Huckleberry Mac, Joe Arvayo, and Stevie MZK. Are you fucking kidding me or what? I didn't yeah. know Lance Armstrong was a Don't. What's with the question? He's just six show. days away from fucking Christmas. You understand me? Bobby Lee <laughs> here. Can I line. promote something? Who's gonna, there's nothing to promote. Yeah, I'm going to say, uh, follow me on Twitter and Instagram, Bobby Lee Live. You're the man of steel. No, you're Bobby Lee Live. I just got to do it every time. Okay. I Bobby Lee Live. Hey, listen, I'm here for you, okay? I love you. Man. I love that you came on. You blew my mind. You blew time. my fucking mind. I can't believe this shit. This is... So then now, Mad TV, you get the announcement they're going to cancel. What's running through your head? It's over. What's over? I thought my career was over. And then, you know... No. Yeah. No, I didn't think so. No, dude, it's like, bro, at, when I got off of that show, no one called. No, they got to let you dry out for a couple of weeks. It's like good week. No, so it took me like three or four years. I dried out. For, I did the road, and then yeah. I came back on fire a little bit, and then I now, you know, doing random shit, you know what I mean? It's just like I haven't made it yet. You I feel made it. it. No. You made it. And many I don't, levels. I know, but still, you know, I know I haven't. I didn't see you perform for six or five years. You've grown tremendously on stage oh thanks man. you've really really made me laugh you're you're Bobby yeah, you're yeah. Bobby Lee now no I feel good up there man you know no you it took uh, me a long time and you're up there every night yeah, somebody yeah. on Mad TV already 
would have called it quits. They would have said, fuck it, why keep getting on stage? That's what I and you have. I'll never stop. You know, the, uh, you were talking about an attitude when you first came on today. Like I said, I could tell by people's attitude if they're going to stay here or not because you got to be doing a certain thing. If you're not doing that certain thing as a stand-up, it's not going to work out for you. I know when somebody's faking the funk and when somebody's working. When you see their name in three different spots every night, they're out there banging it out when you're like, Jesus fucking Christ, is this guy ever take a night off? You know, I, when, I, when we first got here, every fucking night we were somewhere. But it's also the only way you can legitimately prove that you're funny. You can do a movie, no matter how big the movie is, somebody will go, ah, he was all right, or he wasn't funny or whatever, right? But, you know, you can't go to a comedy club and have me crush, you know, and have somebody go, even if somebody said, I don't think it was funny, yeah, but you heard the laughs. You know, so it's like, it's the way I tell myself that I, I should stay in it, you know? I don't know how actors do it. I have some very close friends, dude, that were like on sitcoms and shit, and they had to get waiting jobs. You know, because they didn't do stand-up, right? So they're like, they have to, they, they live by job to job. For me, oh, you're not going to hire me in Hollywood? I'll go on the road. I'll and I'll make, a, I'll make just as much money as I do on a TV show. I'll go to a Holiday Inn in Hasbro Heights. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I mean dude you know I mean I made a mistake that's my backyard I know that's I did it I did it but you know what's fucked up what? what's Hasbro Heights that's where it's I was just there Chan's Dragon Inn it's 10 minutes from Chan's Dragon Inn yo dude some I just the, did a holiday in there some of the best Chinese food you ever have in this country was 10 minutes from there oh I'm, next time if I go there I'll go there you're never gonna go back there I don't I like the couple do you really? Yeah. yeah. The kids, we yeah we'll go there together to the hometown. We'll do a bar, Cuban dude, that'd Chinese be great, thing, dude. a Cuban Korean Let's type do it. bombs on your mom. Fuck call arms. Let me do some sponsors. Right. We'll get you the fuck out of here. What's up, Lisa? How you doing, baby I'm boy? Pretty high. You're not going to Wait, fucking sushi dinner. Tonight. I have to. With those fucking Gentiles. Are they Mexicans or Gentiles? Uh, I think a mix. I don't know. It's our friends. <laughs> Anybody spark the fucking numbers there tonight? No, you're gonna be, you're gonna I'm going to be the only one stoned at only, It's going to be law school people looking at me. Fucking that's s- why I said I'm getting you out of this, though. You're gonna, this is just going to take you deeper. This is Andy Dolores. Oh. She's throwing heat for the holidays. That's a new chef. Speaking of which. On it. Well, okay. Dropping motherfucking knowledge on your people. What are we going to say? You after. Oh, no, no, I'll tell yeah, you. Yeah, tell me now. No, when, you were, when we were driving home from the, long, from the Laugh Factory and Unbelievable was playing. And I was higher than, like, twice as high as this. And you were just beeping for, like, the entire song. The entire like, song. Dun, there were people dun, 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 in the 710. Just it all was, of those was beeps. It was a line from here to fucking Kentucky. And people were trying to cut in line. And I'm beeping at them. We were having a great time. I guess you had a fucking beat. Everybody, what are you, you going to try to cut me off? Cox? Like, what, what, what? And then Welcome to the Jungle came on. And we just, like, both stopped talking. Like, you turned the music down. I don't know. I just remember that. I was so, it was crazy. You like getting high with your Uncle Joey, don't you? Doing 90. Yeah, the music isn't that fun, but it's scary sometimes. What am I going to do with you? I'm not the fucking strangler. Anyway, on it, as usual, the best. I started my alpha brain fucking cycle on Monday. I'm back. I'm back already. It's going to take a couple days to acclimate. But trust me, some people say it takes about a month. I don't know what the fuck it takes, but I feel good. You understand me? I'm sharp. We got Bobby Lou, who's sharp, but in fucking debt on two legs. Queen 76. Anyway... Here's how we're doing it for the holidays. Go on at dot com right now. Start right now. Plan it for the new year. You want to be healthy. You want to fucking shoot good loads. You we want your mind working on all fucking levels. You don't want a bowler. On it's got it for you right now. Shroom Tech Sport, T C M Oil. I mean, they, listen. Don't don't make me go fucking nuts here. Cause alpha not, brain. They got the G P C Alpha Brain. The T plus formula for the testosterone high as your level, the MCT oil, the coconut oil. I mean, it, it don't get no better than this. Go to island.com and press in. Church. Oh shit! And what do you get, Lisa? Yeah. You get ten percent off of orders of like the supplements and and all the and all that stuff, and just not the uh, the kettlebells and the battle ropes. That's right. So you get any any supplement ten percent off today, and stay on it. Cut this shit. Go to stay on it. Give me your address. They mail the shit directly to your house on a monthly. You don't got to leave the house. You got to go nowhere. Fuck you. I'm staying in. On it's coming directly. Me. Get the hemp protein. Delicious. 16 grams of protein. Delicious. The cocoa. Fucking delicious. And Jen, don't they have a lot of sales? Like, if you should follow them on Twitter, because they just had a huge sale over Black Friday. Oh, Black Friday. So, yeah, follow on it on Twitter. Don't fuck around. Go to Twitter. Follow on it. The Rock Your World. My main man over at Iron Dragon, Dave Foley. 
All right, DragonTV.com, putting it together. If you're a classic martial art head or you just want to get into it, if you want to see where this shit started, if you think the UFC is fucking good, this is way before the ropes and people doing loop-de-loops. You'll see the evolution of classic martial arts from the assassins to the thieves to 9-11, uh, 19 no, 9-11, <laughs> 1911, Jackie Chan. In fact, they just got the Jackie Chan animated series. I was speaking to Dave Foley earlier today. Please, do me this favor. You're going to love this channel. It's a Roku, right? Correct. Yeah, it's you a Roku down channel. Check yeah. out what he's got. What do you think, Lee? It, it's, it's amazing. And, and they're going to come out with an app for all Android tablets. So, And I think you can still go to their website and maybe you can watch it on, on your computer. Start right now. Go to fucking IronDragonTV.com right now and press in. Joey. Boom. And you get two free movies on the cuff. See what they got. See what the selection. You smoke a number. Put your feet up. Get some fucking haagen vanilla. Forget about it. Who's better than you? And the cool and the cool thing is, like, I'm canceling cable at the end of this month. That's it. It's over. Yeah, but like these, even after your two free rentals, they're only like two dollars. So if you like, instead of paying one fifty for a bunch of stuff you don't watch, pay by pay by what you want to watch. Pay for what you want to watch. No more. It's two dollars, four dollars, one hundred and fifty fucking dollars a month. Technology. You're 4K. going working. You're stabbing motherfuckers to pay your cable bill. Forget about it. Start with IronDragonTV.com right now. Press in. Joey. Boom. There you have it. What do you think you're dealing with? Some fucking novice. And by the way, the new year started. You haven't got your dick sucked in a year. You know why? Because you're a filthy fuck from head to toe. <laughs> you got to start from the bottom up. Get me on these dot com. I stole a billboard today on Melrose. They billboard. have a billboard now? Me on these don't fuck around. Oh, they fit shit. great. That's what I used to do jiu-jitsu. I, I don't wear them with jeans. I like my balls fucking beat a la fresh. What do you call it when you sit outside of the restaurant? A la fresco? Yeah. That's oh, how fresco, I like yeah. my nutsack. That's how you like your nutsack. Oh, don't yeah, you, Bobby Lee? With that little chin chin juice fucking <laughs> dripping in the middle of your nutsack. You rub it in, you rub it on your fucking. Uh... Anyway, who gives a fuck? I'm what not... do you want chin chin juice on? Whatever, those things. The little omelet thing that you put on and you rub the thing inside with the hoisin sauce. <laughs> what the fuck, Lee? You make it, what is I this? No Chinese idea. food night quiz here? It could Me be. on these.com, cut this shit. It's a good point. What my main man Bobby Lee said. They all come in different colors, like the ones I have are the. Of the jungle sabwa fan, I got black one with a purple lace. Fuck all that white shit. The, the the 80s is done. You don't want people looking inside your underwear and shit. You got blood in there and lizard juice and God knows what else. Little lice eggs in there. Fuck all that. With black, nobody sees nothing. Just in case you blow a fart and you get skid marks. Listen, go to meonthese.com right now. Check out what they got. They also have a beautiful selection for women. And right now, they got free fucking shipping to the United States and Canada, bitches. Ba bam, Bobby Lee. Yo, man, I think thanks for having me, man. Where are you going? You still wear You have the leather jacket. You're in no hurry there. They, they arrest you. Anyway, here's the fucking deal. Go to MeUndies.com and press in. Joey. Boom. And get free shipping. And what else? 20% off. 20%. Where are you going, Bobby Lee? Put my jacket on. in here. I got no heat. <laughs> They, didn't, they built this like in 1929. They don't have heat in these buildings. Can you believe that shit? No. No heat, but a tremendous air conditioner. Anyway, go to MeUndies.com right now and press in. Joey. Boom. And what do you get? 20% off. Yeah, and, and free shipping. 20% off to start and free shipping. Who's better than MeUndies? Right to your house. You see something in there you want to buy for somebody? You can fill it all out and get the undies wear sent right to their house. Plus, Valentine's Day is coming. You want to get your little monkey eaten? What the fuck? You know what I'm saying? Get some new underwear. Get me on these.com. They're very sexy. They pull the sweat out. Every, everything smells delicious, Bobby Lee. Also, my main motherfucking people, naturebox.com. Everybody's looking to get healthy for the new year. It starts right there. They're going to give you a what? Bullet free? A free sample box. Free sample box. Five fucking bags. How many, Lee? Four small ones and one big one. Mm -hmm. And all you got to do is go to the box and press in. Joey. Boom. And get it right now before the fucking new year. See what it's all about. Nutritionist approved. No more eating the fucking snacks. At night, you smoke a fucking bong hit. You eat some of uh, these. You watch the Iron Dragon TV. Who's better than you? Go to naturebox.com and get your free, free, I'm telling you right now, free opening up box. What do they call them? Sample box. Sample box. Right, I get the I get so fucking excited. I wish I had fifteen addresses. <laughs> I send fucking nature box to oh, all we my different addresses. Oh, send it to the address. office. We'll have to do that. That's right. We'll send a box to the office on a card. Fill it out tonight. Let's make this happen. I love you guys, Nature Box. I love you guys, MeUndies.com. I love you, Honor. I love you, Iron Dragon TV. My main man, Dave Foley. I love <laughs> you too. My main Asian. You know I love you to all my heart. I love you, man. Thanks this for having me. This means the world to me. You coming on. Dude, I want to do anything you want, and man. You and I together, dude. You're the king of swing. I love you. 
Don't forget New Year's Eve in the Ice House, 8 o'clock show. Listen, there's some people, they just don't want to hang out and do the countdown. I'm one of those type of people. I want to be home fucking eating something, relaxing, petting my cat. You understand me? I'm in Fort Lauderdale Good for, for you. New Year's. The whole weekend? Yeah, I do. Go to Fort Lauderdale. The improv. improv there. Yeah, yeah, Tremendous. Yeah. The casino? Yeah, well. Oh, shit. In fact, you're going to send Lee Syed an edible overnight. And he's, well, that's what you're going to send it for Christmas. A limo drive my dad. <laughs> up to Fort Lauderdale to meet Bobby Lee's father for one night. <laughs> I got Sons of Anarchy out here waiting for your fucking. Uh, <laughs> and that's it. Where, that you're, and where are you next week? I'm here, man. Okay, so you're here till yeah, New Year's Eve. New Year's, yeah. That's why I love you. Like I said, I'm at the Ice House. I'd like to thank all our sponsors again on it. MeUndies.com, NatureBox.com, and IronDragonTV.com. All right? Uh, we'll be back Monday. We don't know what fucking time. But we'll be back Monday, all right? And we'll be back Wednesday for a special late night Christmas Eve edition. When you're bored and lonely, don't come crying. You don't got to call a hooker. We'll be there for you, right? Stay black. Now that the show's over, don't forget to go to naturebox.com and sign up to get your free sample box of great-tasting, healthy snacks. Forget the vending machine and start snacking smarter with delicious treats like barbecue kettle kernels. Go to naturebox.com slash joey. That's naturebox.com slash joey. Bye, Bobby. Um... Go to MeUndies.com slash Joey and look at the men's and women's underwear they have. And when you go to MeUndies.com slash Joey, you're going to get 20% off of your first order. And right now, you get free shipping in the U.S. and Canada. Go to Onnit.com and use code CHURCH to get 10% off of all of the great suff- supplements. Alpha Brain, New Mood, Shroom Tech, Immune, Shroom Tech Sport. And it's code word CHURCH to get 10% off. And go to IronDragonTV.com. Use code word Joey to get two free rentals. It's a new... Roku channel with all of your favorite martial arts films. Happy Christmas, Julie. So this is Christmas.